Howdy and welcome to another video. The last video that I did, and um, hopefully um, you've looked at it, but if not, you can certainly check it out, um, was about setting up your drums to get to them uh, in the best way possible, that is, with the most amount of ease. So that in, in that video, we were just to, uh, just to summarize, we're keeping our instruments flat, and at the proper angle to be able to actually strike them without having to reach too far or dig down too deep. Today we're going to talk about uh, positioning yourself on the drum set, again, for the same goal of maximizing things. And the, what I want to talk about is where we're going to place our sticks on two of the most important parts of our drum set. Um, <coughs> the, two mo the three most used parts of our drum set for the average drummer playing the average kind of music is the bass drum, the snare drum and the hi hat. Typically, we sit at our right handed set up drum set, and you can read about how I feel that everybody should play the right handed drum set or just the drum set. Um, so we're going to work from that way. But if you are committed to playing the left handed, all these things still apply. Okay, so the right hand, left hand on the snare and the hi hat. So our typical <coughs> pattern, I'll, I'll play like the most basic sort of, a fairly basic pattern, anyways, maybe not the most basic. Uh, that's used in rock and pop music, and it's this pattern. All right, to achieve that, right, you could pretty well do everything wrong, but if we're going to expand from that, we really want to start off and continue playing things correctly. Um, so, with this camera overhead, hopefully catching everything, It'll be a little misshapen because of the fish eye lens, but you get the idea. If we were to play our two sticks, no matter whether we're using traditional grip or uh, match grip, we would put our right stick on the right half of the, of the snare drum and our left stick on the left half of the snare drum. So it's a circle, you imagine down the way, I can play on this side, this side. If I was going to put two sticks on my hi-hat, I would do the same thing. I would put the right stick on the right half and the left stick on the left half. That seems really basic. But in a strange way, it happens, the vast majority of drummers who are self-taught or even when they're coming for lessons, it's something we as drum teachers have to monitor. And that is, the minute I say to a student, okay, now put your, we're going to play this thing, then you need to put your right stick on the hi-hat, they will do this. They will go to the far left of the hi-hat or dead center. And then magically, at the same time, they will bring the snare drum to dead center or even extremes like this. This is something you don't want to do. Okay, You don't want to do it because, number one, you have no wiggle room. Number two, I sometimes say pain is the best teacher, but let's, if we can avoid pain, let's avoid it. The number, I learned the hard way not to do that by smashing my finger with a stick. Right? So some people will go... To, to extremes to avoid this. This is we've, we eventually figure out this is bad. You have you have no room in there to play. You're smashing your thumb. You're smashing your finger from underneath. It just doesn't work. So rather than you know f you know finding a logical solution or they're finding a logical solution, but it always ends up being extreme. And just like in the last video, we're talking about avoiding extremes. This is another chance to avoid extremes. So one extreme is people will just go all the way, and they will actually cross their hands like this. I've seen a lot of this. And so, yeah, you you got a lot of freedom in here, right? And you're crossing your wrist, and you're not going to hurt yourself too much crossing your wrist. But you can hit yourself in the face. Again, something I've learned. I walked around with a big, uh, I walked around with a big black lip from smashing myself in the face because here's the stick, and here I am that, that way, and I'm going like this, and I'm, s and I'm smashing my face. Okay, smooth move, Max Lax, right? Some people will go to this extreme. I've seen this quite a bit. Well, people, you know, pull around out here. This is just not maintainable for number one. And number two, um, it ha makes it hard to get to other places. You have to put your hand over here. You have to do a twisty forearm thing to get this happening. You can't actually use your wrist that way. Uh, it works better than this, but it doesn't work that great. So any stick position that has you extending or at any kind of extreme like this or one like this where you're in danger of hitting yourself in the face, those aren't going to work in the long run. Now, you could just go ahead and do it and say, what does that old guy do? I'm not listening to that guy. I'm going to do it my own way. And smash yourself in the face a couple times and go, ah, yeah, yeah, that might work. 
So what we look at then is we look at putting our two sticks on the snare drum like that. Boom, da, boom, boom. And then when we go to move our right stick to play crossover pattern, we go to the, the right half of the hi-hat. So right off the bat, our sticks are crossing here. So if they hit, and they shouldn't if we're doing things right, but if they hit, then um, you're just hitting sticks. That's advantage one. Advantage one that two is if I'm keeping my wrist straight and I'm not going to a lot of trouble to pre-bend my wrist or pronate my elbow in some way, I have a hard time hitting myself in the face. I can get right down mental with my strokes and I'm not going to hit myself. If I go like that, I'm going to hit myself. If I go like that, I'm going to hit myself. But if I go like that, it's just screaming by. My arm won't allow it, right? If it's on the side here like that and I'm on the, right? You know, if we've set up our drums in a logical way, didn't put the hi-hat over here, but we have it here, and it's kind of, you know, 90 degree out from, or 45, depending on how you look at it, 45 degree out from our torso, right? I'm not going to hit myself unless I lean into it, right? And I'm not going to hit myself this way. So that's advantage two, right? So right stick on the right half of each item. If you're doing the tom, you're doing the floor tom, right? This would never work. If trying to play anything on the snare drum, this won't work. So let's not apply it uh, when, we're, when we're crossing over this way, okay? So that's a, le that's a short lesson on just sitting here and doing it uh, correctly uh, to avoid injury and to maximize your learning. Um, to finish up, though, I'm going to talk about why we do this. And a lot, if you've been studying drums at all or watching drummers or any of that sort of thing, you know there's a concept called open-handed playing. I just call it playing the drums, but instead of c crossing over, you open up. So why don't we start that way? Well, for right-handed people, it's a little harder. For left-handed people, it's also harder because when we do the right hand this way and when we're just learning how to play, we do a lot of syncing up of our right hand with our right foot. Once we do that, it's making it a little bit difficult off the top. But that's not why we keep doing it. It just starts, it's just that way, and it's a, and it continues forever that way. And it really has more to do with the, I the history of the drum set itself. So with the drum set itself, uh, there was no hi-hat at the beginning. There was a bass drum, there was a snare drum, tempo blocks, toms, you know, cymbals on wires, all kinds of crazy stuff. But there wasn't really anything going on with the left side. So people were playing things over here. That is totally not a legitimate 1920s beat, but if they were playing like a do 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 right from 1920, let's say all of me, um, that sort of pattern. So they'd had all these patterns that they were doing with their cymbal, and they were playing the snare drum a lot, tossing salad as they used to call it. And so once we had the high, we're going to play things. We just took the stuff that we're doing over here and they moved it over here. That's really how that came to be. We use our right hand to play over here, right? And that's why we still do it to this day. And like I say, at the beginning, it's a lot easier to make this your sort of, um, you know, your leader, so to speak, um, rather than doing it backwards. But we will get, and we, we will talk about open-handed playing and how far we want to go uh, with it, all right? Um, so right side of each instrument for the right stick, left side of each instrument for the left stick and you will avoid injury and you will uh, get better faster that's assuming you're practicing and uh, it'll make your life easier so next time